Hi, everybody. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're watching us. Welcome to Shepherd's Corner, where we have dialogues with Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon. It is my pleasure to introduce him today and to introduce our topic of conversation. Yes, conversation, or we could use another word, you know. What about the word dialogue? Yeah, we got to use the word dialogue. Word for the day is dialogue. 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 Good morning or good afternoon. Or good day, Archbishop G. How are you? I am real good, you know. What about you? You doing all right? I'm not sure. This one, I'm really not sure if I'm coming or I'm going. Well, boy, it's Christmas, you know. <laughs> Mary wasn't sure whether she was coming or going herself. Eh? <laughs> and Joseph and the donkey, they were headed to, to Bethlehem mm -hmm. for the census. And I sure they wasn't sure whether it's coming or going some days. <laughs> so that's a Christmas thing. It's a Christmas thing, you know, and... What was so beautiful in your last conversation, and I think it, it, it is a lovely lead off, you know, that this season of Advent leading us into Christmas, you know, we have to be people who dialogue and in dialoguing, we must have a certain spirituality. And mm -hmm. so I want to lead off with that because your conversation is dialogue, a portal to the divine. Wow. Mm. So, yeah. Well, that was, remember, somebody messaged you after the last Shepherd's Corner and said to you, no, 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 no. How could, how could dialogue lead you to transformation? How is that possible? So I said, uh-huh. Question. There we go. And that's how the questions come, you know. Yeah. You do yeah. something, somebody asks you a question. And, and, you know, the next, the next question I was asked is, so, all right, all right, you're into dialogue. So, so how are you dealing with that? How are you dealing with Christmas and dialogue? Let me see you. <laughs> well, buy your Catholic news this week if you want a preview on that one. Amen. So, buy your Catholic news. So, I am going to lead up with this question. You know, is dialogue really a way to inner transformation? Well, I want to start by saying. I believe that our contemporary culture far, far, far too often misunderstands dialogue. It underestimates it and it misunderstands it at the same time. Because a lot of what people call dialogue in our contemporary culture is not dialogue. is a lot of other things and we look at that, but it's really not dialogue. So unless you really have a good understanding of dialogue, it's hard to understand how dialogue could be a portal to the divine. And it's also hard to understand how dialogue could lead to inner transformation. So getting the understanding of dialogue right, I think is, is, is the first thing. I'll say also that by taking a secular view, we see dialogue in one dimension only. Yeah. In the human dimension, that it is just, you know, something that two people are doing, or a group of people are doing for that matter. But we don't see the dialogue in its in its deepest sense and it, with its broadest reach and, and how the church has, has defined dialogue. But what is the, my, my, my question is, did, did the church always see dialogue in the way that you are taking us down this road? Or... Because I, I, many would argue, you know, it, it used to be just only one way. Well, you know, it depends on when you're talking about. <laughs> if you're talking about Jesus himself, go and look, the woman at the well. That's a one way. Yeah. <laughs> eh? The man born blind. That's a one way. We could keep going, you know. The, the most um the most profound and I will say to you the dialogue that had certainly the deepest impact on my life but also the greatest and most profound gift that any human has ever been given after Mary was the dialogue on the cross mm. <laughs> that's a big dialogue 
Dialogue on the cross, you know, friend. <laughs> because, you know, to breathe took pain. Yeah. It was painful to breathe. And yet this dialogue happened on the cross. And this man heard, today you will be with me in paradise. One thief that was ridiculing and joining in the crowds and another one who understood so and believed. That dialogue. So that was not one way. That's beautiful. That's powerful. Powerful that language. Was one. And, 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 yeah, that was a proper dialogue. Proper. <laughs> that was certainly a portal to the divine. <laughs> <laughs> we can say that for sure. If you want, man. So I going way, way back, eh? <laughs> I go way, way back. I mean, I could go back to Abraham and God. Yeah. So, Lord, you mean. If they had 50 just men, you still <laughs> burn the city down. <laughs> and he goes, Well, no, if you have 50, but but what if we're missing five? <laughs> it's still burn. And, and down and down and down it went until it came down to five and the city still burned. But that was a dialogue. <laughs> so like a dialogue that I have with the Lord every day. That was a dialogue. So no, no, no. Dialogue was not a one-way street early on. It is, it is what it is. So, you know, we have to see dialogue in so many, so many dimensions. We do not see many ways the dialogue opens us to the divine, opens us to the poor, to the other, and ultimately to a deeper knowledge of our own self. And, and, and I'm saying that when it comes to dialogue, those are the levels of dialogue and those are the dimensions that the dialogue offers us. And that's why it, it, we need to pay more attention to how we are in dialogue with each other. So, you know, I, I love conversating. You know that. I conversate about anything people want to ask me a question about, are you ready to conversate on it? And that's a form of dialogue. And, and many times, you know this true. Because you, you see the material, you know what we're talking about, and yet many times the experience of the dialogue transcends the material that we were dealing with and opens to a sense of the divine that gives you this wonderful sense that God is with us. And, and that's more than the material that... that, that that we were actually working with, yeah. that, that something happens in the dialogue that opens us up to this, this, this sense of, a div of the divine. And that sense of the divine is really quite amazing. You know, just, just, just looking at that article, and I want to encourage people, pick up your Catholic news. Eh? By the way, this, this, this is a bomb Catholic news. It's $10 this weekend, and it's special. So pick up your Catholic news. But... It is, you, you say it's dialogue is not just speaking. You see, dialogue is ultimately, you know, a deeper knowledge of ourselves. You know, dialogue is not just speaking. It is giving of oneself in love to the other. It's giving of oneself in love to the other. In the end, it is giving of the self in love to God. Absolutely. That's where we're going. Yeah. So this comes as a definition that, that of um, dialogue that comes from the Catholic Church, um, from our communication um, document in from Africa, you know, communion and progress, and 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 it defines dialogue as a giving of yourself to the other in love, because dialogue is not just simply. You see what you have to say. I see what I have to say. You see what... No. If I'm doing a real dialogue, I'm listening. And the art of listening is the art of presence. And, and that means that I'm all in and I'm all in here for you. And that means that I'm, I'm, I'm being present to you in every way that I can. And so when, when you understand that as dialogue, it is a gift of self in love. And it is an expression of love. 
I like that. I like that. I like the art of presence. I, I, just, I just that just captured my my imagination there. The art of presence, of being present to the other. You know, I, I'm looking at it from a husband and wife relationship, yeah. a husband and wife dialogue. You know. Yep. Father and child, mother and child. Yeah. Siblings, friends, work colleagues, because. Have you ever had the experience of you're talking to somebody and they're watching their cell phone and <laughs> and they flicking through? I'm listening, you know, I'm listening. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. You keep talking. You keep talking. Oh, and, Lord. and they're flicking through. It drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Nuts, nuts. It drives you nuts for. Because I know they're not really listening to me. You know what I mean? They're more oh, but, in tune with what's going know, on. It's also, you know, like we used to talk about disrespect mm -hmm. early in the day but you see Derek it's because you're a man you, you can't do two things at the same time that's your problem <laughs> <laughs> they will tell you I could I could scroll through here and hear everything you're saying yeah. in fact what you just said was so 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 but that is functional listening that's not dialogue. You know, a, I, I'm trying to make a distinction here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hear you. That's yeah. functional listening. It's not dialogue. I could I could listen to the radio while washing the wheels. Yeah. While driving the car. But that's not dialogue. Hmm. That's just functional. Wow. That's entertaining. That's functional. Dialogue is not just hearing information. Dialogue is, is, res is, is responding to a human being by being present to that human being. And in that art of presence to the human being, that human being is receiving something from you. And what they're receiving is love. Wow. And dialogue is giving of yourself in love to another. So we just learned two things here. You know, we heard art of presence. I like that. I was the other one about. Uh, okay, so you have, but I'm listening, I hear you. But you, you, you said something. Functional, else functional listening. Functional listening and the art of presence. I love that. And so you want to contrast functional li listening from the art of presence. Yes. Because there are some things that you you just need to to listen to. You know, but you don't need to be present to it. Use it. And you, there are two ways to listen to music. You could, you could be listening to music while doing all kinds of other things. But there are moments when you want to sit down and listen to music and be fully present to it. Mm. And it's fully present to you. When you go to an opera, you go to a show, you go to a movie, there's a musical you don't want anybody dis disturbing the 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 the, the theme, the, the rhythm, um, the sensitivity, the, the the connection. You don't want anybody disturbing that. You want you want full presence. Yeah. That is, um, and if you have on headsets, you even want noise cancelling. <laughs> well, there's the technology, be, Bishop. The, there's the technology. The new, the new um the new the new term is immersion is what you want <laughs> fully immersion fully immersion and 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 that's a different way of listening and so I don't want you to hear dialogue as just you know two people at the street corner or two people just engaging in in idle chatter dialogue is is ultimately, ultimately, is a giving of ourselves and love to God. Because here the, here's the, the challenge of dialogue. While I am in dialogue with you, the question is, can I see the face of Christ in and through you? That's the question. Can I see the face of Christ in and through you? You know, Mother Teresa used to talk about Christ in the distress in the skies of the poor. Mm -hmm. And and you have to recognize the face of Christ through the dis distressing disguise of the poor. Hmm. 
that's a big dialogue, boy. <laughs> that is a... to, be, to be um in dialogue yeah. is to be fully present and to recognize in the face of the other the yeah. face of Jesus Christ Himself. You no you, no you you see you opened up you know you opened up with dialogue therefore requires self awareness. And I think that all this conversation as it's going tells us that you have to be self-aware in a dialogue. You have to, yes, because, so a uh, 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 great example. Um, imagine you had a day where your watch stopped and you thought it was 7 to 8 in the morning when in fact it's it's quarter to nine, and you had an eight thirty appointment. And by the time you realize the problem was that your watch stopped, it wasn't that you wasn't being so productive, but the, your watch had actually stopped, and you 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 way 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 behind, and you going into a very sensitive dialogue that was supposed to start at eight thirty, and you pull everything together and jump into the dialogue somewhere by nine o'clock. You know much stuff going on. <laughs> Now, to be fully present there, you have to consciously bring yourself there. Yeah, yeah. Because you could go in there and say, God, how could I be so stupid? How could I not have realized? How could this, how could... You could go in there yeah. and, and the mental chatter is happening. Yeah. Or you could go in there and say, okay, what's happened? It's happened. I am here. I'm all in. And then you turn up for the dialogue. Now, that's awareness. As the first, the first bit of awareness, recognizing that all kinds of things have happened, and I might not actually be ready for this dialogue, but I can I invest and be all in here, right. and not just jump into the idle chat in the head and allow that that chatter to go on and on and on, uncontrolled. That that that's that to me is always a first step in the dialogue. So self awareness is key. How do we turn up to listen to others? How? And, and if you've just had a, a major um, emotional experience, positive or negative, and your friend comes to you and wants a very intimate type of conversation, you have to move your emotions to this. Because if you were just on a huge high, then your emotions are all over the place. You have to come back to this. So have we hastened to justify our position and to argue with others to prove we are right? Or have we settled back, brought ourselves fully present and listened to people in with a view of, 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 of knowing more who they are and entering into the dialogue about what God is asking of us? That's the real question. Wow. That, that, that changes the whole um, definition for me of dialogue, you know, because lots mm -hmm. of times, I mean, even in the business world, even in, in so on, you know, we look at dialogue as a kind of a debate, you know, which is right. different to this way of dialoguing. And when Trinity say we have in a dialogue, they really mean we are having a debate. <laughs> I know that. In a, in a debate is I win and you lose. So it's always a winner and a loser. And once you set up the debate, then people are going to win. Yeah. In which case, I am no longer really listening to you or being present to you. I'm listening to see the weaknesses in what you're saying mm -hmm. so that I could destroy your argument mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and prove that I am right. And so the dialogue has misinterpreted mm -hmm. as a state is a, is a major challenge. And I think in our culture, we good at that. Have you ever heard somebody speak about something from their heart? And then somebody has said, yeah, but you know, um, but what you say here wrong, and what you say here wrong, and what you say here wrong, so I can't believe that. Mm -hmm. They have not yet taken the person. Right. Or where they are, yeah, 
So if you if you heard somebody really speaking from your heart, where you start is, gosh, that was moving. Thank you so much for that. I learned so much because, and you give some examples. Yeah. But you know, there's some things that tend to in this in what you said, um, and and maybe we could explore that. But but two things I heard were, and you see what you heard, and that doesn't sound consistent to me. You see, nine out of ten times you say, "What oh, stupid this? You just finish it." You know, holy fellow dog, and you say, now this guy may be expressing everything from his heart, you know, and you just destroyed him there. What stupidness you say? You know, <laughs> height and dotishness. <laughs> so, dialogue is not debate, dialogue is not trying to counter the other person with an alternative argument, dialogue is not trying to prove that we are right. Dialogue is not trying to justify our position or to argue. It is actually listening to understand and to hear the other person's position. And when the other person is listened to, then they have a freedom inside that allows all sorts of other things. I wonder, I wonder one day I said dialogue requires self-awareness, you know? And have we really turned up to listen? You know, mm -hmm. what a debate. What a quarrel, what a prove yeah. my point. Yeah. Exactly. Because once dialogue is only about proving points or debate or, or whatever, is we're not listening. We are not listening. We are listening to counteract. And you know, we had that already. Hmm. That's the monologue of the deaf. <laughs> So dialogue requires a deeper way of being open to the other. It requires a moving out of an adversarial style, which is a debate style, where we are proving super, superiority and, and looking to score cheap points or, or demolish the, the argument of an opponent. But that's not dialogue. We have to be open. We have to be respectful. We have to be listening. And we have to entertain things even when they don't make sense to us and inquire in a respectful way until we understand what is the person was saying. That is a, a, an, a, an important way of understanding the dialogue. But that, that, that hasn't really been our Caribbean experience, you know, and we, we're looking at it from a Caribbean point of view here. I mean, this conversation that we're having, that has not really been our Caribbean experience, not, not, not in any way, not even in families, not even in parliament, nowhere. Well, you know, we did. somebody put forward the position and what we're doing is we want to demolish them. Yeah. We don't want to demolish the position enough. We want to demolish the person. Ah, God, you said it. We, we exaggerate every little error that they have said to illustrate how silly their position is. And we argue down the rabbit hole trying to show just how stupid this position is. And that, that's why we are set up badly in, in dialogue in our country. So debate engages us in a defense of our views in opposition to the viewpoint of others, adversarial. And it seeks ultimately to win by destroying our opponent's position and obliterating them from the face of the earth. And then we feel we easy, man. Yeah. We 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 in charge. But that's that's so counter to the gospel, so counter to, to what Jesus taught us, so counter to what great humanity is about. If you've ever had somebody really listen to you, really deeply listen to you. You know how life-changing that could be. Yeah. yeah, big time. You know how life-changing that could be. In fact, sometimes when I'm listening to people, if I realize, oh, this is important, what I tend to do is I just, I just want to make sure that I got you right. Is it that you are, and I repeat what I've heard, mm -hmm. and most times the person says, thank you. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying. But I'm also saying so, so, so. Oh, I missed that. So, so this is an important point for you too. Yes. 
and then you see a kind of a sigh of a relief yeah. and, a, and a freedom come because the person has been heard. And that's so important. Because when, when a person is listened to, then that, that person has real deep, deep, deep joy. Yeah, and, and it takes me back to, to that dialogue that you shared with us earlier about the woman at the well. Now that touches me deeply, you know. She was heard, you know what I mean? And yes. she heard also from what yes. Jesus was saying. And it changed her life. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, true debate sharpens the speakers as it forces them to view their positions through a contending view. And it, they, they, there is a, uh, an importance for that. There's a, a proverb that says, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. But by focusing on the rebuttal of the contending view, there's no true human-to-human -human engagement. It is a shaping of our mind, not an openness to conversion of heart. Yeah. And it is the openness to conversion of heart that really makes human dialogue human. Mm. And, and, and I like that because through, through dialogue, you can get a conversion. And there's a come back to the woman that you well again, you know, yes. a conversion, you know. In in and so that woman started the dialogue with Jesus and she didn't realize where it was going. Yeah. But by the time she realized, she went to tell everybody. <laughs> this, right. You know, come and see a man who's told me everything about myself. Yeah. She no longer hiding that she had things to tell about herself. Yeah. She tells uh, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Powerful. But see, in contrast, in the Caribbean, often when we speak about having a discussion. We have in mind a debate, and and that is really leading to our own destruction, I think, because a debate is an ego problem. Yeah, we want to shine by making other people look small, and you only have so much shine you could do <laughs> today for for police and tomorrow for thief, you know. Yeah. And, and we are not really interested in the ideas of that other person or allowing their ideas to really soak into our heart oh, and gosh. give us a new perspective. What we want is, and what we are looking for, is just to obliterate the person. Oh. Wait, but that's not really... That's not Christian. Yeah. And I would yeah. tell, tell it's not even Christian. You know, it, it comes down. Yeah, it comes down to we want to win. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and whoever whoever lost, vex. You know? yeah. Winner take all. Winner take all. Yeah. But that's ego. That's the ego. That's when the ego is to the fore and the ego wants to look good and the ego wants to shine. But that's not dialogue. So someone presents an idea and, and we do not begin with common ground or the merits of the idea. We, we, we start searching for the one point where they made a mistake or they didn't understand or the one point where they, their, their point was actually um, you know, not quite fully developed. And we, we jump in there. And we're good at it. Huh? <laughs> we, we really expert at it. We really expert, so it's not that the people didn't listen, but not with a view of that changing their hearts, but with a view of responding, responding and obliterating is, is kind of where it has gone. You know, so sometimes, you know, somebody might, they, they might, in their, in their conversation, in their dialogue, you know, 90% of what they were saying is correct, but we hold on to the 10%, and we destroy them for the 10% and not say, well, you know, I, I can't, you know, but you know what I mean? Is, sometimes it's 2%. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes it's 2 or 3% that is that is needing of clarification and rather right. than helping them to clarify, yeah. what we do is obliterate them. I, I see that as 
as intellectually lazy. Oh, God. It is intellectual laziness because if we were astute and present and alert, we, we would want the person out of the conversation. We would want both of us to benefit from it. Yeah. We wouldn't want to benefit by throwing cheap shots at somebody. We would want both of us to benefit from it. Like that intellectual laziness is what you're just yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. This does not take much intellectual power to, to do that kind of foolish things that we do. It really doesn't. Every argument will have some flaw. And my minor or major, but the real creativity, the intellectual capacity, and the emotional intelligence turns up what we are ready to learn and be moved by the heart, by what we are hearing from the person that is speaking. That's the real excellence. That's what we, we have to get ourselves to. If we want to really understand dialogue as a portal to the sacred, then we have to understand that when we turn up a dialogue, we are listening to be open both to what the Spirit is saying, but also to conversion of our hearts. So I'm going to pull something that you said in the last dialogue or conversation with us. Um, you said it takes great spirituality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to call that that. We have to call that. It takes great spirituality to be able to do that. I agree. Because intellect, when we turn up to be present to people, that's real creativity. That's real in intellectual capacity, emotional intelligence, and, and deep-rooted spirituality. That's the only way, way we sustain the encounter with God through the poor, by understanding exactly what we are privy to when we turn up with a human being to, to a dialogue or to a conversation. You see that um, dialogue and the object of dialogue is to be open and receptive, to be able to listen. And many times, I like this, many times we need to suspend judgment to be able to hear all sides of the issue. <laughs> That's a big one. Boy, you know, two people start a conversation and the next thing happens, boy, use a fool or what? That's in it. That's in it. You haven't even heard what the person have to say, good you know. You're already disrespecting, closing down, right. um, belittling both the person and what they're saying. And I'm saying that doesn't help. It doesn't help. Suspending judgment is important. You know, sometimes there's some people who just get painted in a box. Eh? And you know, they, they, when people see them, they have certain preconceived things about how that person is going to behave. You know, have you ever done the mental work of, of engaging a person like that and, and just welcome them and, and let them be and listen to them deeply and see where it goes? Because that opens many, many, many graces. Huh? Mm -hmm many graces because that that openness allows a person to draw out of themselves more than they thought they might have had. Yeah. You said that by listening to the position of others, um, we learn our own assumption and blind spots. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's beautiful. You yeah, know? yeah. Because you see, when we when we enter into the process of listening, we have to be curious. We have to be open. And when we're curious and we're open, we would realize why am I having an adverse reaction to this thing that the person is saying? Right. Why why am I getting angry or getting annoyed or it, are it, it, agitated or whatever it is? Why am I doing that? And and that helps me to understand me a lot better. If we enter deeply and with focus, we learn 
about ourselves and we learn about others and we evolve and we grow and we become a better human being. And that's part of what this, this whole dialogue thing is, you know? People, Archbishop Jay is having a dialogue with us, a conversation. And the theme is dialogue, a portal to the divine. I, I, I like that, a portal to the divine. Yeah. When you when you enter into deep dialogue, we learn about others, but we also learn about ourselves. But we also learn about the hidden forces that prevent agreement and a common approach that we do not easily see and hear. Have you ever had the experience, which we had in, on November the 19th, where you had people who had very strong views on different things. And never the twain shall meet him. Mm -hmm. And everybody tucked into their view really well. Well, the challenge there is nobody's really listening to anybody else. On, on November the 19th, I think we had a great listening process. Right. And I think people listen to each other. And I believe that when people listen to each other, something happened that opened to more than what you had and what I had. And that's something that happened really open to a touching of the Holy Spirit, a sense of the divine. And that's why I would say dialogue is a portal to the divine. Hmm. I, I like that. You know, dialogue, you know, it, it helps build community. <laughs> absolutely 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 but it takes a spirit of openness and a desire to learn if you're going to do dialogue properly because dialogue begins with a re-examination of all the positions and the assumptions that that currently we hold and i think that that's so important anybody who doesn't interrogate their assumptions it's stuck for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we like to say, well, no, no, what I believe is well, that's what I believe. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, have you reviewed it? Mm -hmm. Since you were five years old, have you reviewed it properly? And if you have reviewed it, okay, what is the Lord saying now? So dialogue begins with the re-examining of all positions and the assumption that underlies all of these positions. And then when we see that and we experience that, we are now open to the divine and we are now open to conversion and, and, and something beautiful is happening for God. Right there now. Right, right there. In, in our listening, in our listening, you said, we're exploring the common ground, the common ground that we share in our listening, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that that is such a big key in dialogue that, you know, we, we drop, we've dropped, you know, it is it, almost not part of what we do when we dialogue, but I, I love yes. that in, in listening, we're exploring the common ground that we share and not the two percent that we do share correct the 98 <laughs> the 98 we come in around that you see we are listening to understand and to find agreement how do you listen and i, I want to really challenge your viewers with this how do you listen do you listen so that you can find a better story than the person told do you listen so that you have a counter argument to what they're saying? Do you listen so that the child coming back or the, 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 the experience of the listening allows a, a, a deeper understanding of what, of what we're really speaking about? How are we listening? And that, that has a lot to do with how we've been listening to her. Somebody who really believes they've not been listened to well does not listen well. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. If you've, if you've never experienced somebody listening to you well, 
Are you going to listen to her? It requires full engagement. That's what it requires. Full, full, full engagement. You taking me back to our whole, our whole culture, our whole culture, and I think that this is why um, youth feel the way they feel. You know, because we've we've thrown on them. Children must be seen and not heard. <laughs> you remove the dialogue immediately. Uh, yeah. But Pope Paul VI sees, um, believes that dialogue is a new way of being church huh? for our era. And, and Pope Paul VI really laid some intellectual foundations for our time. Huh? In, he did it with inter, in, Integral Human Development. He did it with this document he has on, on dialogue. He did it in so many different spheres. But the apostolic letter of John Paul II for the new millennium says a spirituality of communion indicates above all the heart's contemplation of the mystery of the Trinity dwelling in us and whose light we must also be able to see shining on the face of the brothers and sisters around us. So he's seeing two things that a spirituality of communion indicates above all the heart's contemplation of the mystery of the, twin, of the Trinity dwelling in me, in us, but also the light of the Trinity shining off the faces of my brother and sister. So, so dialogue is a contemplative exercise. Because mm -hmm. if you're not contemplating the mystery of the Trinity in me and in the person with whom I'm dialoguing, then I, I can't see in the face of my brother and sister the light of Christ shining or the light of God shining anywhere at all. And I think that that's always been an, a, a challenge. Through dialogue, we, we are invited to contemplate the true dignity of each person mm -hmm. and the gift that they are to us and, and to each other. And in a contemplative indwelling of the Holy Trinity. As we contemplate that indwelling, we're invited to contemplate the other as the home of the Trinity. Wow. In this way, the other becomes a portal for the encounter with the divine. <laughs> that, that is, that's powerful. I, I use that in my wedding sometimes. You know, I ask, husbands and wives to be, I said, I want you all to look at each other and I want you to, to see Jesus in each other. Begin yeah. this way. Yeah. yeah. Because when that happens, mm -hmm. that contemplation opens up now to a whole new engagement between the two. Now we're fully invested. We're fully present. We're here. And, and dialogue goes to a whole new level. So it requires consciousness, but it, it requires presence. Presence is always an amazing experience if we have the eyes to see and the heart to experience the truth of that encounter with another. And I think one of the things that our viewers experience in, in Shepherd's Corn is, is that quality of dialogue when we go not just rebutting each other or listening to each other but allowing christ to shine through the conversation that we're having with each other Amen. that is that is an amazing thing for my for my perspective so then address the leaders of the non-christian religion in in madras hopes in joel john paul said by dialogue we let God be present in our midst. For as we open ourselves to one another, we open ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. With these words, the saintly Pope raised the bar of dialogue to a whole new level. As you open yourself to the other, you open yourself to God. Isn't that, isn't that just beautiful? Yeah. And look at who he was addressing. He was addressing leaders of non-Christian religions. Yeah, yeah. As you open yourself to the other, 
you open yourself to God. That I found, you know, uh, yeah. I find that beautiful. Yeah. So dialogue is not transactional. An attempt to achieve something. Rather, dialogue is theological. It is a portal to the divine. And by opening our hearts to the other in the, in the dialogue, we open ourselves to the ultimate other. That is God and God's self. Ultimate other we open ourselves to. You know, that is that is really mind-blowing to me. Eh? I, I want you to imagine if we all learn to listen to each other and 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 therefore see in our daily communication also our prayer and our contemplation. I see it in, in so many, in all spheres, you know, in all spheres of society, in family, oh gosh, you know, in everything, you know, very early, you know, and hey, we're going to be celebrating five years just now, my guys, just, I just want to let you all know, in seven days time, we're going to be celebrating five years of having conversations with this gentleman being wow. Archbishop, the Archbishop of Port wow. of Spain. Don't forget the day. The 27th of December. Mark it down. Put it in your diary. And don't be like Uncle Derek here. And miss it by a day. <laughs> but what I will say is the anniversary of the conversations was somewhere, I think it was February we started. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was February. Fe J late January or early fe February 2018 is when we, we, we first started conversating. Wow. We, we will have to do a... Um, we certainly have to do a, a something for that. A five year special. <laughs> this because we had some deep, deep conversating in this time. But here's it, sir. The deepest truth about dialogue that I want us to all understand is that it is deeply spiritual activity. Mm -hmm. And if it is done well, it brings a deep inner transformation and ultimately conversion to the heart of people. Amen. And that I I think is is the, the the heart the heart of it, because when so if you take any relationship you have, if the the dialogue is transactional only, um, I need bread and milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I need this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, if it's only transactional, what happens to the relationship? The relationship is not one of, I would say, you know, communion. I want to use the word communion. You know, it's not one of communion. It's transactional. It's for me. And what's for me is for me. And what's for you is for you. Uh, so... That's the first thing. But if amidst all the transactional conversations we need to have to get through life, every day you also had a different conversation where you learn something new about that person. Mm -hmm. And that person learns something new about you. What happened? What would you imagine would happen if every day in the conversation, it moved from us to an openness to God and God's spirit. Yeah. It just blew your mind every single day. What would happen to the relationship between you and that person? Yeah. I, I, no, no, this is why, as I said, you know, it will build communion. It, it would, and, and this is why I love this, this, our whole synod here talks about building community, inclusivity, and dialogue. Mm -hmm. and, and I see that so powerful. And, and you showed us in the last show that we had, the nativity scene, which is right behind my back. And I had yeah. to pull it in, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yes. But it is, it is the way in which dialogue can transform. I, I want to ask our, our viewers to do something this Christmas time. 
because you know this Christmas time, we, we're going to have plenty of time with family all around. Yeah. And you're going to hear the same old stories one more time. And the same <laughs> characters turning up. <laughs> and there are going to be some that you're looking forward to see because you haven't seen them for a while. And there are some that say, oh, gosh. But what if, what if during this, this season of Wonderful Grace, you, you chose someone and had a, a, a dialogue with that person, not for any transactional reason, but, but just literally to get to know them a little bit better, yes. to understand them, to hear them. And to, to, you setting out to listen, to listen very deeply to them. And, and as you listen, ask more questions, become real curious. And, and engage them in their story, in the story of their life, especially for a younger person, engage one of the older people and ask them, you know, what was it like when? And, and just allow that openness of dialogue, that openness of, 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 of breath, that, that sense to emerge through the conversation and see, see where it leaves you. But be aware of what happens in your heart as you enter into that dialogue. Yeah, you're going to be nervous going in, but it'll settle quickly enough. And just become curious and ask curious questions and, and, and see how that allows an emergence of something between you all. I, I really would like people to, to try that one out and let's see what happens. I, I see that as, you know, that person would feel validated. That mm -hmm. person would feel loved. That person would feel respected. That person would feel somebody listened. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the things that people want to experience, you know, that they're loved, they're validated. Somebody is listening. God is listening. In effect, God is listening. We are being like an Emmanuel to that person. If we deepen the quality of our dialogue, mm -hmm. we will deepen the quality of our relationships. Mm -hmm. We'll deepen the quality of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. We'll deepen the quality of our relationship with God. And we'll deepen the quality of our spirituality. It, it, it's so simple. It's so simple, you know. Start off by listening and then turn the dialogue better. That's where you start. And I just want to train them. I just want to train a little synod here. And when that person hears and that person feels that they're validated and they're listened to, they will mm -hmm. feel that they're included. So here we got the inclusivity. All right. You Correct. know, dialogue and, is with inclusivity. Yeah. Don't come without dialogue. It doesn't. But you know that that's really what we are looking at mm -hmm. and working working through. So what's my key message? Through dialogue, we're invited to open to the other and to the encounter with God. Wow. And I really want you to to try it out. I really want you to to test it, test it, and let's hear. Send back and give us comments on how how that went. So again, how you do that? Well, become conscious of your conversations. In each one, try to focus on the person or persons involved. Listen deeply to what they are having to say. Ask questions for clarification. And if you need, then ask questions to learn new things about the, the person and new things about the conversation, new things about yourself, new things about the other. And above all, ask for the grace to see the face of Christ in that other pe person wow. that you have any conversation with. Above all, ask for that grace. Yeah. Dialogue is a powerful way of renewal. Eh? Powerful. And if we would do it better, we would experience our life more rich. Test this on, on one person that you haven't paid much good attention to. 
and see what you feel at the end of it and what the person sees, what the person's face says at the end of it. And let's, let's just see. Let's just see how it works. You know, that, that's, that, that's such a powerful action step that you've given to us, you know. Um, and I would see, you know, in husbands, wives, you know, children. What about the people who work for you? What about the garbage collector, especially at this time of the year? You know, the little, the little granny who comes to church. You yeah. know, how about, yes, having that conversation, that dialogue with them and seeing the divine in them. Wow, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that, Archbishop Ji. What's your scripture reading? Because I, you know, you know, your scripture reading pulls everything together. Yeah. The the scripture reading, of course, is from John fourteen fifteen to twenty two. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Advocate to help you, and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and he will be in you i will not leave you orphans i will come to you before too long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because i live you will live and on that day you will realize that i am in the father and you are in me, and I am in you. And if we enter into deep dialogue, profound dialogue, what happens is we start recognizing the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in the person with whom we're having the dialogue. And then we have a wonderful connection that moves us forward easily. Archbishop Jay, thank you so much. You know, we enter and we get in close to Christmas. And we want your blessing. We want your blessing on us that we would be able to truly see that dialogue is a portal to the divine. Pray with us now, please. Father, we thank you for this Christmas season and we ask, oh God, in the wonderful dialogue between humanity and yourself where the word becomes flesh and the dwells amongst us, set in motion in our hearts a desire to dialogue more deeply with you and more deeply with each other. We pray in this Christmas season that we may hear all of the stories of Christmas and recognize in them the deep dialogue that you've entered into with us, the human race, and with us, your people. And we pray, Lord, that we may have courage to really open our hearts more and more and more to each other and grow in listening, in understanding, and in, in responding with love and compassion to each one. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Archbishop. Jay, may you have a happy and holy Christmas. God bless you through this entire season. May the Spirit of God be with you as you continue to have conversations with us. And yes, next week, happy anniversary. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless. All righty. Bye.